All right, apprentices, I've been getting a whole bunch of people that have been wanting me to do this video to go over blueprints and what all of the symbols mean. So here we go. So if you're an apprentice and you keep trying to go up to plans and your journeyman keeps yelling at you because you don't know what you're doing, but you want to learn a little bit, these are all of the symbols that you need to understand for you to really be able to understand the plan and what's happening. I'm not covering every possible symbol that there ever can be, but if you understand all of these, then you'll be able to wire probably seven eighths of a place. And then you'll be able to figure out the things that I didn't cover, like little weird things that some architects use, some engineers use, some don't. Um, a lot of symbols are, are different from plan to plan, but this is the set that is gonna get you reading plans and understanding what's going on. Depending on who's making the plan and what they're writing in, a lot of people will have different ways that they annotate things, different shapes and things like that. But kind of in general, when you're looking at a duplex receptacle, it's the plug on the top, plug on the bottom, right? One device that you stick in, the normal thing that we see as a receptacle to plug into, that's gonna be the circle with two lines in it. It's a 120 volt duplex receptacle. Then we've got something that's a circle with three lines in it, and that's usually denoting a three wire 240 volt or 220 volt plug, 220 and 240, same thing. Um, just different eras of what we used to call it, but it's, it means the same thing. So it could, uh, it could even say 220 under it or 240 under it like this one says here. So you'll notice this is a three wire, which means two hots and a neutral. Over here, this is just two hots. So that's a two wire, 240 volt receptacle. It would have two hots and a ground. It doesn't require a neutral. Um, so you might see just a normal plug and so that you don't get confused, they might just write 220 on next to it. So that's another way that you might see it. Another 120 volt duplex, you might see it has the word GFI or GFCI written next to it that lets you know that that's a specifically a GFCI receptacle. Uh, then we've got CT written next to a receptacle. CT means countertop. So it means that these are receptacles that are to feed a countertop. A lot of times in kitchens and like, you know, fancy utility rooms, um, laundry rooms, things like that, you'll probably have countertop surfaces and then you'll have receptacles on them. Um, so specifically they'll write CT so that when you're reading the plan, you don't put the plug down below at knee height, you know, you'll actually put it up on the countertop. Uh, another thing you might see is a receptacle with APP uh, written next to it. That usually just means appliance. It's specifically dedicated for an appliance. So a lot of times these are just dedicated receptacles, meaning they come off of a breaker and go straight there. They don't branch out to 15 other receptacles. They are dedicated for a specific appliance or a piece of equipment. Another one you'll see is a quad. So the hashtag sign, right? So it's got two lines like a normal receptacle would have, but then it's also got two other lines. And that just means it's two duplex receptacles right next to each other. Usually that's in a two gang box. If you're in commercial, it might be in a gangable box or it might be in a uh, 1900 box, you know, like a four square box. Um, but it just means that there's two side-by-side -side duplex receptacles or four actual receptacles, quad, four, uh, to plug into. And then last, uh, we've got uh, just another way you're probably going to see these either horizontal or vertical doesn't matter some people start the lines in the circle and then go outside of them some people like to write the lines straight through so it's like you know anything like that we know that that's a receptacle next we've got switches so switches um they're all going to be some kind of an s uh, except for this keypad over here. We'll get that to, to that in a second. If you see a single S somewhere written with like a dotted line going up to a light, that's a single pole switch. If you see a little three next to that single switch, that means it is a three-way switch. And there's usually going to be two of them at opposing ends of a room. Then you might see four-way switch. And a lot of times you'll have a three-way on one side of a room, a three-way on another side of the room, and then at some other doorway, you'll have a four-way. So you'll have an S3, S3, and S4. So it lets you know you have to go from the three-way to the four-way to the three-way, but it's just the four is letting you know that that's the four-way location. Um, we might have switches that are dimmers. They have a little D next to them. And some people write the, the numbers up top, some people write them down below. So instead of super text, they might be subtext. Uh, doesn't matter. Either way, a little D next to an, a switch usually means dimmer. Now, a lot of times they won't write it at the switch. They might do something up where the light is written and they might put dim so that you know that that light is dimmable. Um, but most often you're going to see it at the switch. If you have a, a few switches stacked next to each other, that's going to be either a single switch, 
a single gang box. Um, two gang box, three gang box, four gang box. It just means two switches, three switches, four switches. Now you also may have like one of these might have a three next to it and another one might have a four next to it. So you could have a single pole switch right next to a four way switch next to another single pole next to another three way switch. It's very common, uh, but that just means you're in a four gang box. Uh, we have 220 switches. So there are switches where you feed two hots into them and two hots out. So it's switching a 220 or 240 volt load. So it'll usually denote 220 next to it. Um, then we've got keypads. So a lot of lighting control systems, Lutron, you know, homework systems. Um, you could even have radio raw two systems, control four. There's a whole bunch of different lighting control systems. But typically when we lay out where the keypads are gonna go on the plan, we write keypad in specific locations. And then all of our switching is usually done in like closets or something like that. So it hides where all of the actual radio rod devices go. Uh, unless you have a homeworks panel and you're not going to have all those switches, you'll have, you know, RPMs and like a whole multiple panel setup for the lighting control system. But you're still going to have to know where are the little touch pads throughout the house so that we know how, you know, each scene that we're setting up and where all these things are controlled, they're controlled through keypads. So if you see a KP with a box around it, that's keypad. And then last, we have occupancy sensors. So sometimes people will want um, you know, like a pantry or a laundry room or a garage or something like that to be on an occupancy sensor. And that just means when you walk in, this occupancy sensor sees motion. It sees you come into the room and it turns the lights on. And that way when you leave, it'll time out after a few minutes and automatically shut off on its own. Um, my kid used to leave lights on all the time in the garage. <laughs> She'd go out and do laundry and then just leave the lights on. So eventually I put an occupancy sensor in there so they would automatically shut off and automatically turn on. So you'll typically see a little OS occupancy sensor next to a switch. Next up, we have lighting. So um, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of lights. There might be even variations to these. Um, and there might be more of these as well, but these are kind of the, the, the general ones that you're gonna see the most often. So uh, this is a hanging light. You might see the word shand just written underneath it, or you might see like the full word chandelier. So it lets you know that this specific hanging light is a chandelier. You also might just see pendant, like P-E-N-D, written right next to it. Sorry I did that in red to make that all confusing, but you will you might see a little like words or something underneath them and it lets you know like this is a cord pendant. So it's just a light hanging from the cord with a little glass thing and a light bulb in it. and that is one kind of light so you know as an electrician what you how much weight that's going to be and how you need to support it and everything and then if they write chandelier you know like oh i might have to upgrade this to a fan box a fan rated box something that's heavier duty to be able to hold the weight of a chandelier so they'll, they'll usually denote that um, on there or most of the time any hanging light that's not heavy will just be this symbol and anything that is heavy we usually have something written so that you know that it's heavy. Then we got wall sconce. So anytime you've got a wall, you got one little line and a circle coming out. That means that it is something that is wall mounted. It's gonna come out of the wall and hang. So a lot of the vanity sconces that you're gonna have in bathrooms above uh, mirrors, you might have like garage sconces on the outsides of the garage. So when you're pulling up in your driveway, you know, you've got lights, but anything that's mounted on a wall is gonna be that symbol. Uh, then probably the most common symbol you're going to see in most jobs. I don't know any houses that don't do recess cans anymore. Like everybody does it. Um, so that is a symbol for a recess can. It's a, a square with a circle or a square with a hanging light symbol on the middle of it. Then you'll probably notice much smaller ones. So you might have two different sizes on a plan and lets you know that one of them is the full size, probably like a six inch, five or six inch recess can. And then a mini can is going to be either like a three or a four inch. So it's just much smaller. And a lot of times, they're put into cabinets or they're put into like built out niche, uh, niches, niches. On that note, is niche and niche two different words? So then we have mini can and then you might see another kind of can with a WP next to it. WP just means weatherproof. So a lot of plans, uh, good architects will actually take the time and let you know all of the weatherproof cans that are outside on porches and patios and stuff like that. And they'll write that. A lot of times they won't. They just draw cans everywhere and it's up to you to figure that out. 
and most LED trims nowadays are sealed, so they can be used weatherproof or not. Most of them are just rated that way, but not all of them, so you have to be careful. Um, we also have cans that have a D next to them. So like I was saying before, we have a switch with a D next to it to let you know that that's a dimmer, or you can just have a recessed can or a light that says D next to it so you know that the homeowner wants these lights to be dimmed or dimmable. Uh, next up, we've got a track light. So sometimes you'll see this with more heads, like six heads. So it lets you know we want lights shining out that way and down this way, but sometimes it just might be coming off one side. So that is a track light. Most of the times those are put in closets um, nowadays, but in the seventies, they were put everywhere. Kitchens, like people use track lights everywhere. It was like the most modern, cool thing to have track lights. I hate putting them in. God, I hate track lights. Uh, okay, so then another kind of can that you're gonna see is directional. So there's a few different ways that a directional can can be uh, written. It's a normal can with some sort of variation of an arrow show, uh, sh pointing in the direction that they want the directional can. So it's not a downward can, it's a, a can that's kind of tilted a little bit and it's pointing in a certain direction. A lot of them you can actually change and kind of move which direction they point, but it's actually letting you know with the arrow where they want it pointing on the plan. Or some of these are like filled in, so you'll have a circle with like a little hole over here, and then the rest of it's all filled in. And then it'll have an arrow coming out of it to let you know like the little port that the light's coming out, they want pointed in a certain direction. Anyways, you might even not have that. You might just have like a regular can that says DIR and it's a, so let you know that's directional. But usually they'll still include an arrow to let you know which, which way they want it to direct. Um, and then the last two, we've got under cabinet lights and above cabinet lights. So a lot of uh, kitchens, you know, big custom homes, they might spend $100,000 on just kitchen cabinets alone. And so a lot of times they'll have in cabinet lighting, um, ICLs, which I guess I should have put on here. It's gonna be the same thing, but ICL in cabinet lighting under cabinet lighting, above cabinet lighting. And usually they just, they put one of these under each cabinet. So you'll see on the plan, like several of these little like I-beam looking things. Um, and that's to let you know that there's some kind of cabinet lighting, whether it's above it, below it, or in it. Next, these are some miscellaneous things that you might see. There's probably several things I should have put on here as well, like disconnects and things like that. But um, we've got an SD. Smoke detector. Uh, you'll see smoke detectors in bedrooms, uh, outside of bedrooms, any room essentially that's got a closet in it. Um, you'll, you know, one on each story of a house. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different places that you can put smoke detectors. It might have an HD instead of an SD, which means that it's a heat detector instead of a smoke detector. Um, you might see something that says combo like SD with a combo next to it. So you know that it's, or it'll say like CO2 because there are some codes and places where you have to have combination smoke detector and carbon uh, dioxide detection. Uh, but anyways, it's gonna be some, some sort of thing like this. This looks like a ceiling fan because it is a ceiling fan. That one's pretty easy to get. If you see a box with a J in it, you'll see this a lot in commercial and that just means junction box. You might see JB or J, but it just lets you know, Run a home run to this location, stick a box somewhere, just leave the wires in it so there's a junction box available for maybe some equipment to hook up to that's getting hardwired to it rather than you putting a receptacle in it because if they wanted a receptacle, they would have put the receptacle symbol. So a lot of times you'll just see a J for J box and that means later we're gonna hook something up. Uh, you might see the same thing just with LS. So a lot of times big houses will have landscape lighting. They'll have you know low voltage lighting out in flower beds and stuff like that. And so typically we'll run uh, like a 12.3 from a switch location. So we run the black as a constant hot, um, and then the red will be our switched leg. And so we'll run a neutral, a switched leg, and a constant hot all out to a junction box outside for the landscape. That way, if they need a constant hot for anything, it's there. If they want something that's switched, we can put it on lighting control, we can put a radio raw two control on it, do a whole bunch of different things with it. But I like to give a constant hot and a, a switched leg and make sure I have a neutral out there. So that's how a landscape stub is usually denoted. You might have one at all four corners of the house or something like that. Um, and then we've got vent fans. So in the bathrooms, you know, you've got a fan that turns on to suck all of the moisture and other stuff out. <laughs> so that's what the little yin yang symbol looks like. It's not actually a yin yang. They should do it like that. I think that's cooler. And lastly, we've got some commercial stuff. So definitely not everything commercial, but 
some things that you're probably going to need to look out for as you are apprenticing and you're starting to kind of get your, your feet under you. Uh, you're going to see receptacles that have lines, that have other lines coming off of them, and there's going to be numbers denoting something. This, in commercial settings, the engineers draw up the plans, so they will actually write the home runs in for you, so you don't have to figure out where all the home runs are. And so they'll have L145, L146, L2, whatever. It just means it's panel L1, because usually in commercial, you got like three, eight panels, you know, tons of them, and each one's going to be... Um, you might like have an H1, H2, L1, L1A, L1B, you know, a whole bunch of different things. So anyways, just lets you know which panel you're in and then which circuit number, or which breaker. Next, we've got this like thing that's half filled. That's a night light. So a lot of times on a plane, you'll have a whole bunch of two by four uh, light fixtures, like in a kitchen or wherever in an office building. And you'll notice like every three of them are like half filled like this where the rest of them are just a, a rectangle. So that means that these are night lights, which means that they stay on when everybody goes home at night. They're just constant power all the time. Um, so a lot of times that's just so that you can uh, either keep light in there at night so that nobody messes with the place or it's for egress so that you can get in and out. So if you have to walk through a dark building just to turn lights on, that's not very good, right? So having some kind of pathway lighting or you know just general lighting for people that are employed there to be able to get in and out you know, at night or in the mornings they'll have night lights. Um, we also have emergency lights. You can have emergency lights that are two by four. Sometimes you'll see an EM next to something to like denote that it's an emergency light. And again, you're not gonna have every one of them. There's gonna be every few within a room that are EM lights. Um, but these are specifically wall mounted frog eyes. So it's got a big battery pack and two eyes. And those eyes, you can kind of move around like a frog's eyes and point them wherever you want. So if power is lost, there's a backup battery inside that kicks on and provides enough, you know, 12 volts of battery, six volts of battery, depending on what kind they are. Um, and then they'll shine out light until the battery is run up. It might be like 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, something like that. But it just gives you some general egress light when power is lost. Um, and those are wall, wall mounted. Then you'll have something like this that is an exit sign. So every door, um, that you can get out of the building has to have an exit sign on it. So again, there's a battery inside of it that if power's lost, these lights come on and it kind of shows people in the dark or if there's smoke or anything like that, you can kind of see where the, where the exits are, where the egress is. And then they combine two of those sometimes to have a combo exit emergency light. So there are some situations like maybe in a bathroom, you're going to want an EM light, but you don't need an exit. Like there's an obvious door right next to you, you know, like you know how to get out. Um, or in some kind of a hallway that doesn't actually have an exit, you might still just put frog eyes, but you don't need the exit part of that. And then if you're like at an exterior door and there's an exit sign, but there's no other light anywhere around, a lot of people will put combo EM lights and exits. So at least you can see the exit, but it's giving you some extra light as well. It's shooting light out, so it's just better to be able to get out and to be able to see where you're going while you're trying to get out. So that's pretty much it. Those, uh, if you're, again, if you're apprentice and you're just trying to figure out blueprints and stuff like that, um, these are the things that you probably need to be the most concerned with so that you understand what's going on in the plan. I think if you can understand most of these, then you'll really understand the weird little idiosyncrasies, the little different things that I haven't covered. Um, because a lot of times too, they're just in the notes. If you just go through the key or the legend, most of the symbols are denoted as to what they mean. So if there are symbols I didn't cover, which there definitely are, push buttons, chimes, you know, doorbells, stuff like that. There's all kinds of stuff that I didn't put on here. Um, but you'll be able to figure that out. So this should at least get you really far though, like wiring houses, running over the plan, looking th at things, understanding what it's actually talking about so you don't look stupid in front of your journeyman. So anyways, let me know if you guys want any other videos similar to this, liked it, hated it, whatever. Leave us comments below. Love you crazy people. I'll see you in the next one.